り2ゲームで殺さなきついな<笑>まさかおめえがよこんな簡単な嘘に引っかかるとは思わなかったからさ正直驚いた<笑>かわいそうにな唯一のチャンスを逃したんだよあ断言するお前は負ける<音声>やれるもんならやってみろはい、はい、What's up guys? It's Brahma Nami Every favorite to be here I feel like I haven't said that Like ever Uh, yeah So, wait, is the lighting okay? I can't play. The lighting isn't that great. But it'd be worse if I turn off that lamp. Maybe if I turn on this lamp? Sorry. If, it, if this is the first video that I have, my video that anyone's watching, and you can tell it's very, very rehearsed, very scripted. Does it even matter if you can see me? All that matters is what I'm saying. This is like better if I film it from over here, but will my head be chopped off? You can still kind of see.、Uh, I don't like that though. What if I stack up these books for my stupid religions, univer I mean,、uh, great university course, just in case if uh, my uh, professor is listening?、Uh, the course is great. Yeah, I'll show you. I don't even know what this is. But, you know, I'll just stack it on there. Great. What could go wrong? Okay, I get it. Squid Game is fun. I get it. It's about people and they're playing children's games. But they have a twist, and if you lose, then you die. Oh my god. This show is great. Okay, okay, yeah. So someone told me about Squid Game recently, and I looked it up on Wikipedia. I was like, oh my god, it came out like a week ago. I read the synopsis, and it's like, okay, yeah, I, I literally had the reaction of, oh my god, this is right up my alley. I, 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 like, I check it out. I watch episode one and I'm just like, eh,、oh, what am I watching? I skip ahead to the first game. I watch the first game and it's funny. And then I start watching episode two and it's like, episode two really made me go, like, what is this? They're not playing a single game here. And I get it, it's to flesh out the character. I get it, guys. I get it, guys. I get it, guys. I get it. I get it. You're gonna dislike the video and get out of here. But the reason why I'm saying shut up about Squid Game is because that there are at least two. Other, ironically,、uh, well, I mean, that's a. Isn't, isn't Squid Game South Korean? Oh my god, I'm gonna be called racist now. Well, I gotta check. Okay,、uh, Squid Game is South Korean. There are two other Japanese shows, and one of them was remade into a South Korean version. But I think that they're way better than Squid Game is. And look, I'm fine with Squid Game as it is. I, like, I appreciate it. As an attempt to be the same as the other two shows that I'm about to mention, that are probably in the description, honestly, if you just want to fast forward. Yeah, just go into the description, look at those titles, look them up, watch them. They're great. If you want reasons to watch them, then keep listening. Because Squid Game completely rips off Alice in Borderland, the first show that I want to talk about. I've been meaning to talk about that show on my channel for ages and I just never got to it. But what really ticks me off about Squid Game is that it's getting all the attention and I don't know why. Jeremy Johns is reviewing it, everybody is reacting to it. Really? Like, why did Alice in Borderland go completely under the radar when Squid Game is completely the same but worse? I'll tell you why it's worse, okay? So, like, spoilers for Squid Game. We start off with like hundreds of people, and then by the time we reach the end of the season and all the games have been played, like spoilers, but you probably see it coming, by the end of the season, almost everyone has died, okay? In Alice in Borderland, it is literally the exact same premise, kinda. It's like a whole bunch of, it seems like young adults are all sent to this parallel world. Where they have to compete in death games in order to survive. But they're more interesting than Squid Game. Squid Game is just six. It's just six games and they're all fine. Alice in Borderland is kind of creative though. 
Each game is ranked by a playing card in a deck, like a poker... I don't have any props, frick me. But, um, like, okay, what it is is that ace is easiest, king is hardest. So if you're playing a, a six of spades game, the six means that it's going to be relatively difficult, but not as difficult as a seven or eight, obviously, And but it's more difficult than a five or four. And then the suit of the card tells you what type of game it's going to be. A clubs means that it's a team battle. Uh, spades means that it's going to be a physical game that's going to, like, you know, you have to run around. You know, it's going to test your physical limits. Diamonds tests your intellectual limits. I, I honestly think that diamonds will be my weak point. Because especially in the manga that's based off of, because these, this is the thing, is that I, I do somewhat have to give credit that I think Squid Game is entirely original. I don't think it's based off anything. The two shows that I'm talking about are based on manga, and if you don't know what that word means, you know what anime is? You know how anime is basically a Japanese cartoon? Manga, from what I understand, is a Japanese comic book, essentially. But you can find them translated into English, unofficially, somewhere, okay? Just look for it. Okay, and now uh, Hearts. Hearts is the most interesting and the most dangerous, and when people on Reddit are coming up with their own games, it's almost always Hearts, because the idea of Hearts is that it's so complex. When you're first introduced to the Hearts games, you're told that they're games that involve betraying other players. They're, they're, but they're psychological games. By the end of the manga, and especially enforced in the mini-sequel manga, and by mini, I mean mini. It is very small. If you do read the manga and you're like, oh my god, there's a sequel, don't get your hopes up, because it is very short. But it's incredibly enforced in the sequel manga that the Hearts games, unlike what Generation Achi wants to say, is not designed so that you have to kill other players in order to survive. The whole point is that Hearts games makes you think that that's what you have to do. But if you guys overcome your need for, for your own individual survival and work together, you can find a solution where everyone can live. And the difficulty of the game determines how hard it is to overcome that need to, like, just forget about everyone else and focus on your own survival and just work together and find a solution. The reason why I think Alice in Borderland is better than Squid Game isn't just because of that, but it's also because that, like, I don't, like, okay, I'm sorry, I feel like someone in the comments is just gonna write an essay and say, oh, Squid Game is so inspiring because of this and this and this, but I don't understand why. Squid Game just seems to be a show like, oh yeah, humans suck, look, they're all playing these death games, and then by the end there's no real message. Like, straight up. In Alice in Borderland and in the next show that I'm about to mention, which is Liar Game, it says in the description. In those two shows, the whole point is that everyone wants to leave. Like, the whole idea is that they start out at home and life sucks. Then they get sucked into these games and then they're like, oh my god, what was I thinking? We gotta get back home. And then they go back home and then they feel more appreciated that they don't have to play these scary games. In Squid Game, they do that straight after the first game. They go back home, and then they're like, oh yeah, our lives suck. Okay, we're probably better off with the death games, and then they go back. But it's like, in Alice in Borderland, the whole point is that everyone who's transported to the Borderlands, at the very least, subconsciously, has a desire to die. So the Borderlands is basically putting that to the test. And they're saying, okay, you say you're suicidal, we're gonna put you into this world, where you have to play games all the time. And if you truly want to die, all you have to do is lose. Or your survival instincts kick in and then you want to win. But the whole point is that by the time you've beaten all the games, you will be able to choose by that point if you truly do want to die, or if secretly you do want to keep fighting and live. That's the whole point. It's meant to like, it's meant to kind of inspire you. Like it's not meant to like talk down to you and say like, hey, like, if you, if you're depressed about stuff, if you don't like your life, it's not saying like, oh, like, you should be ashamed for wanting to die, like so many people do, but it's just, it's meant to kind of say like, hey, look, like, yeah, life sucks, but like, just keep going, man, like, 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 there's nothing else better to do, to just keep going. The whole point is that it's essentially saying, 
you could die at any point. So, like, just, just live life as best as you can until, until, you know what I'm saying, right? You kind of have to read the manga and come to your own interpretation. There's a straight-up scene at the end of the manga where the main character, after he just went through all the games, is finally just directly asked to his face, why do you choose to stay alive? And then he says, I, and then it cuts off, and then it cuts to the next scene. And the point of that is that you as a reader, after reading all that he's been through, you, the reader, should be able to fill in that blank. Like, there is no answer to what he says. It's just that you as a reader are supposed to be able to think of something. You're supposed to be able to feel that the character has something to say in response to that. I hope that I've sold enough on Alice in Borderland. Just go watch season one on Netflix. Season two is coming out probably sometime next year, 2022. Um, and then go, so watch season one and then read the manga and then go and check out the very, very short sequel, which is, it's very good. It's just, it's very short and that's what's disappointing about it. But um, now we go on to the next show because I don't want this video to be so long. Is it raining us? Maybe it's that just wind. I think it's just wind. Okay. The second show that I want to talk about is, you already know by this point, it's Liar Game. Liar Game is Alice in Borderland. Again, I feel Liar Game is better. I read a review of Alice in Borderland critiquing it, and I remember I laughed at some point in it. It was mentioning, like, you know, but it's, it mentioned Liar Game. The review basically said, like, if you came to Alice in Borderland from Liar Game and you expect it to be like Liar Game, you're going to be a tad bit disappointed because Liar Game does a good job at, like, actually making it clear that the author has sat down, planned out the game, has planned out exactly how the character is going to win, and has just made everything perfect. But Alice in Borderland sometimes feels like the author is just making it up as he goes along, and his evidence for that, the reviewer's evidence for that, is that there are like, there are sometimes like three chapters in a row that all end on the exact same cliffhanger, which is just the main character saying, I think I know how to actually beat this game. And I kind of laughed at that, because it's kind of true, especially in the King of Clubs game. But, Liar Game... Okay, so Liar Game isn't perfect either. There are some bad things about it, and I'm not sure if I'm going to mention them here. I might, since it's an unscripted video, but I might mention them later, because I, I do want to talk about, especially Liar Game, a lot more in maybe future videos. I want to, like, maybe rank the games or, or talk about the characters, I don't know. But, like, I, I started reading Liar Game, and the... <laughs> This is going to sound really messed up, but the thing that almost made me want to stop was when I realized that the games don't result in death if you lose, which is really messed up to say. And I, I feel kind of completely, like, silly for ever thinking that, because I was just so used to... Because from Alice in Borderland, I checked out As the Gods Will, which is also, like, I guess it's a thing... I, I, I don't think... I, I think Squid Game is better than As the Gods Will, honestly. Like, <laughs> season one is fine. I read season one. There's, like, parts to it that I'm just like, eh, like, why are you doing this? Like, it's like the author thinks that it's funny. It's like, maybe it's funny if you're, like, a 14-year-old. Maybe I would have found it funny then. Even then, I can't imagine my 14-year-old self finding things funny. Or maybe that's finding it funny. Or maybe that's because I was just a nerd back in the day. I don't know. But, like, I'm still a nerd now. But, um... The, the movie's okay, it's just, I don't know, it, like, I, I remember when you, when you, because As the Gods Will, and I'm not talking about Fire Game anymore, I'm talking about this, but As the Gods Will is basically Alice in Borderland, but amplified the messed upness, like amplified how messed up it is. When I first watched the movie, I literally felt like I was going to barf because of how disgusting the deaths are. In Alice in Borderland, the deaths are just like, you know, they happen. They're, you get shot, you get a, you, you, you know. But, um, in As the Gods Will, they're very creative with how you die. And it's like very, 
disgusting. And it's like, I haven't seen any of the Saw movies, but from what I've heard, it's probably a bit like Saw. You watch the first game and you're like, oh my god, what was that that I just experienced? Then you get to the second game, and like the moment that the second game starts, you're like, oh my god, this is going to be the whole movie is dealing with this crap. The third game is very creative. It's also the most messed up in how you die. The fourth game is lame, because even though I just said, like, the deaths are so messed up, Something that really made me confused about the fourth game is that you don't even see anyone die. You don't even know what happens if you lose that game. The fifth game is dumb. And the sixth game is like, I don't know, but like... Okay, I don't want to talk about Asda as well, because I started reading season two of the manga, and it was just the most dumbest thing ever. I quit after chapter six. Like, I'm sorry, like, feel free, as the Gods Will fans, to tell me if season two gets better. But like... Season 2 just looked dumb, and, I, like, I was just sick of it. Like, I wasn't gonna read 186 chapters. Season 1 is only, like, 21 chapters, I think. Season 2 is, like, 186. Uh, Alice in Borderland is, like, something like 40 or 50 chapters, and the sequel is, like, 11 chapters. Now, Liar Game. Liar Game is 201 chapters. What was that that I just made with my mouth? It's 201 chapters. But it's very good. I wanted it to keep going. And it did keep going for a while. Like, all the TV shows that have been based on the Liar Game manga ran their course and finished before the manga finished. The manga ran from 2005 to 2015, so like 10 or 11 years. And I can see why, because it's, it's, it's so good. And I, I really want to talk about the characters in Liar Game, because the characters... In Alice in Borderland, it's more... It's not really the characters, it's the situation that gets you hooked. And then the characters are kind of interesting, and then they kind of hook you in later. With Liar Game, I feel it's the characters that hook you in first, and then it's the games that are kind of sitting in the background that you think are kind of cool. The main characters of Liar Game are Neo and Akiyama. Neo is just a, a nice girl in society who's very honest, and by very honest I mean she's the most honest. She just wants everyone to get along, she wants to help everybody, she just wants everyone to help each other, and as a result she's kind of beaten down by society, she's kind of looked down upon uh, by society. Then she gets sucked into the liar game. And in the Liar game, you don't die if you lose, but you'll end up losing a ton of money. And by that, I don't just mean, like, game show, like, oh, I could have won this money, but I didn't. I mean, you literally are put in debt by this stupid game if you lose, and you have to, like, pay off your debt. It's the dumbest thing ever. And, like, what's funny is that as you're reading, you're just thinking, like, if this actually happened, just go to the police. Like, surely the police, and, and the, the manga does kind of try to explain this is why you can't go to the police, but it doesn't really do a good job at it. And I think that the reason is, is because it can't do a good job at it. Because if this did actually happen, you would just go to the police, and then they'd come in and then they'd stop the game or whatever. But, of course, if that happened, then the manga can't happen. So the manga does put in, like, a little bit of effort, to try and explain why they can't go to the police, but it doesn't really make much sense. And honestly, I did kind of quickly realize, like, okay, I just gotta ignore the police part. I truly just have to believe that these guys, like, accidentally signed a contract or something, and they have to play these games now. The first game is very dumb. The first game is the worst game. It is literally, you are just given a bunch of money, some other random guy is given a bunch of money, and then there are no rules. You just have to try and steal as much as your opponent's money and try to keep as much as your money as possible. And then by the end of the month, whoever has the most money wins and they get whatever extra money they had as prize money and you're put in debt. Um, that's the dumbest game. It, that is the worst game in the manga. The games only get better from the first game. Um, but the point is, is that Neo, being honest and not really being confrontational at all, immediately gets her money stolen, like all of it. Spoilers, but like it's kind of obvious like when you're reading the manga you're like, oh my god, what have you done? So she does what anyone would do in that situation Which is go and find an ex-con artist who just got out of prison. I'm joking YouTube I'm joking Don't take down my video claim. It's claim. It's inappropriate or whatever. Okay, obviously to anyone watching this There's no reason for you to go to an ex-con artist who just got out of jail, 
who you don't even know for help. I just find it funny in the manga that that's what she does, and it's literally what saves her. I find that funny. It's funny. <laughs> but the point is that this con artist is Akiyama, and he agrees to help her. And Akiyama is the smartest dude ever. He's literally the smartest guy ever. Uh, and basically, the whole manga is about Nao and Akiyama going through these games together. And Akiyama is the mind, Nao's the heart. They work together. Because it, it's painfully obvious that Nao would never be able to win a game without Akiyama, even though she kind of does later on. Oh, frick, I'm sorry. It's painfully obvious that Nao wouldn't be able to make it through the lag game without Akiyama. It seems like Akiyama would be able to do it all by himself, but especially in the later games, and I think this is kind of because the author wanted to make it this way, it becomes very clear Akiyama wouldn't exactly be able to make it through the games without Neo either. Akiyama is amazing at immediately understanding whatever game he's in. He can understand the situation perfectly, he understands what other people are going to do, and then he understands how to use that so that he, and hopefully Neo also, can win. And, but Neo is the one who wants everyone to win. Akiyama is so good at just using all of his brain power on winning the game and knowing how to beat the game. But Neo isn't really interested in how to beat the game. All that she's interested in is that everyone is at least not poorly off, you know? Like, Neo is obsessed throughout the entire manga in saving everyone, or at least as many people as she can. And what's so inspiring about that is that she goes out of her way to save everybody, even those who have just stomped on her. And it happens to her a lot throughout the manga and, and I mean the show too. There are so many times where people, like, you're, uh, you as a reader are just like, oh my god, Nao, this person is clearly going to betray you. Don't fall for it. And then she falls for it, because that's who she is. And then, and then whatever. But the point is, is that, despite all that, she doesn't even care. She still wants to save everybody. And I just feel like that's just such a good message. Because I feel like so many, like, you know, like, even I... Like, even I can barely come, uh, come, can overcome my desire for at least revenge. You know, like, I like to think anyway that if I was put into the liar game, if I knew that I could win and then win a crap ton of money, but it would be at the price of someone else, even someone who I don't even know, being in complete debt forever, well, not forever, but like, would be in quite a bit of debt that they couldn't realistically pay off anytime soon. And I knew that the alternative was just so that we both trust each other and both win and then walk away. The problem is, is that it, the, the manga is also telling you not to be naive. You also have to know when other people are going to screw you over. It's just that if you have the opportunity to screw, screw someone else over, just don't do it. The thing is, is that I don't really think that I... I think that Nao... Nao's supposed to be, like, the best of humanity, and I don't think I should be that ashamed to admit that I am not as good a person as Nao. I try my best to be a good person, and as I was just saying, I like to think that if it was someone else, whether that's a friend or someone who I don't even know, I would try and make us both win and gain nothing if it means that we also lose nothing as opposed to me gaining something and them losing something. But notice how I said if it was a friend or someone who I don't even know. I'm not exactly sure if I could overcome that greed if it was an enemy. There are a lot of people out there in the world who I really do not like and outright hate because they have screwed me over in so many different ways that I don't really want to talk about. Maybe I'll talk about it in a video diary or whatever. And I'm just trying to imagine if it was one of them, I'm not sure if I could bring myself to try and make it so that we both win. I'd really just want to screw them over in exchange for them screwing me over. But is not the kind of person who would do that. And eventually, there's a game later on in the series where the only reason that Akiyama's plan even worked is because everyone trusts Neo and knows that she's going to make everyone win even though they've done nothing but be mean to her. That's the only reason why Akiyama's plan wins. And that's why the author's trying to kind of say, like, see? Akiyama can't win without Nail either, kinda.
But the manga is so filled with, oh my god, like, but you, never, never, when Akiyama pulls his stuff, when Akiyama pulls his plans, you are never sitting there thinking, how did I not think of that? You're sitting there thinking, there is no way I ever, ever could have thought of that. But that's amazing that he thought of that. And that's just what's so great about it. Anyway, this video's gone on long enough. Alice in Borderland, Liar Game, and as the gods will, if, you, if, you've, if you're bored, I guess. Uh, go check those out. Please, like, go check those out. Some guy is straight up uploading all the episodes of Liar Game to his channel. It's called Let's, let's, uh, what is it called? Let's, let's, let's try out Japan or something like that. Can't remember. Uh, let's, let's try from Japan. It's called Let's Try From Japan. He straight up just put everything from Liar Game on there. I don't know if, I don't know if he's going to get in trouble for that or she's going to get in trouble for that or if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. But, uh, like... Go and support Liar Game. Go and support Alice in Borderland. Get Jeremy Johns to review those. Get people to react to those. I'm sick of hearing that Squid Game and everyone talking about Squid Game is the greatest thing ever. Squid Game is fine, but it's not as good as the other shows that it's very clearly ripping off. Just go and please check out Alice in Borderland. Check out Liar Game. Go and show those some love. They really deserve it. Give, get, like, give them a chance, please. See you around, guys. We're gonna put you into this work, into this world.